Within this video, we're gonna go ahead and create our own custom texture here inside of Twinmotion. I'm gonna assume that you already have your textures, but if you don't have your textures, you can very easily come to a little site called Polyhaven, and I'll go ahead and leave the link in the description down below, and just come down into the texture section down here in the center of this. And these are all free, so you can go ahead and grab them, use them however you want. And what I'm gonna do is just use this first one that we have here, so this worn cabinet, we can click on that. Now we have a couple of different kinds of textures that we can actually download down here below. So depending on how much detail or how simple you wanna keep things or stylized, you can choose that. So up here in the top right, we have a 4K. I'm gonna set this to 1K because I don't need anything large. I'm not gonna be going into Blender. What I would rather do is actually set this up to zip. So I'll just do that. And then I can choose which of these I actually want. Now I don't need Blender stuff and I don't need GLTF stuff. Um, my AO, I don't really need this one. Or roughness and metal, I do want to hold on to that one. Diffuse, we'll grab that one. Displacement, not going to need, so it won't really matter. Uh, normal, DX, and GL. So depending on which way you're going with these, let's go ahead and turn these EXRs off. Um, and the roughness, we'll grab that one as well. So anything that is a ping, I'm probably not going to be using, so I'm not too worried about it. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the download button and send this into my downloads. Once it's actually finished downloading, uh, we'll go ahead and unzip it, and I can go ahead and use it here inside of Twinmotion. To begin this, I've gone ahead and just drug in a couple of objects, just a cube and a sphere, and you can find those underneath our objects, under primitives, and you can drag any of these in, which is nice to have. So, first things first, let's go ahead and sample the material on this, so I'll use the little eyedropper right here, and sample, just left mouse click on here, yay, now we have our material base. Now I wanna make a copy of this, and that's really easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and just click right here, and now I can click on this little plus and go ahead and add in new material. So if I right click on this or click on the little ellipses just at the top of it, I can rename it. I'm just gonna name this M underscore wood. So now we have our wood material. Let's go ahead and just start playing with this one immediately. And what I can do is click on the color here and we can change this to something like yellow or red. Say, okay. Now if I drag this onto my object and I drag it onto that object, now you can see that these both have that material. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and add in those textures. So if I click on the little more button, down here below, I can go ahead and choose a texture. So I'll click on this, and I'm gonna come up to Open, and go ahead and choose the Diffuse, or Albedo, if you have that. Go ahead and open that up, there you go. And you can see that red is actually being multiplied in on top of that. Let's go back into here, go to our color, and we can set this back to white. There we go, so now we just have the wood. So next up, we've also got some opacity mask that lives inside of here, some luminosity, some grunge. Now the grunge doesn't do a lot, but it does add a little bit of flavor to it, which is nice. You can kind of see it happening right here at the top of the sphere, right about there-ish. And then we can also set up what sound is gonna play whenever we're walking across this material, which is really cool. So it's a nice little feature there. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about the reflection. I can go ahead and turn this all the way up and I get something that's very mirror reflection, but I don't necessarily want that. I actually want the map to control that. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on the more button down here at the bottom and go ahead and grab the roughness. So I'll click on that and open that up. Now, if we go back and we actually dial this down, you will notice in a few places, it's very subtle, specifically right here where that highlight is, if I start to kind of turn this up and down a little bit, you can kind of see where it's reflecting a little bit more or less right there in that little crack. It's very subtle in this case, but in this case, I don't necessarily want much of a reflection, so I'll just turn that one off. But it's good to know that it's there. Now your scale will actually control how often that texture tiles across the surface, which is good to have. And the weather will choose whether or not the weather will be shown on top of this. So say snow and rain and things like that. Next up, we have our settings over here on the far right. Now, inside of here, we have the ability to add a butt map. And this is where the normal map is gonna come in handy. So we'll click on the more button down here. Here's our area where we can add that. So we can say that and open. And we've got DX and we've got GL. I'm gonna choose GL, it should work either way. So that works pretty well. We can also do parallax if we wanted to do that, which we're not gonna go into here. So if we go back to our settings and I'm actually gonna turn my camera, so it's right about here-ish, and I'm gonna change the time of day and if I change this to something that's a little bit right on the edge, here we go, so I can try and get this. There you go, you can really see this bump showing up right here, right? Like it's really nice. So if I turn that down, you see that then becomes very smooth, right? So this is where our bump actually comes in. Now our glow, now I don't have a glow map, but you can actually make these suckers glow too, and they do give off light, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna leave that off. Metalness will turn on its ability to actually reflect light like a metal. So that's fun. And our two-sided, which we don't need here, works really well for a single polygon plane for things like windows. So in case you want that glass to be seen on both sides, you can go ahead and use that, which is really nice. And the last up is our X-ray. Now the X-ray, what this allows you to do is actually see this material through other objects. This is great for things like laying down plumbing and 
electrical wires. Not really great for what we're doing here, but it's good to know that that's actually there. So now that we have this whole thing made, how do we actually save it? So what we can do is come over here, either right click or click on the ellipses, and we can say add to user library. Let's go ahead and click that, give it a moment, there we go. So if we go back to the top of our library and come down to the bottom options, you see we have a user library right down here at the bottom. So we're gonna click on that and you can see we have our wood. Now I've got a couple of other ones in here like the brick and this rocky dirt, so I can click and drag that on there and I can go ahead and add those to it as well. And when I have this one selected, I can go ahead and author this one as well. So this is kind of fun to go through here and kind of play with some of these once you've got them made. So there you have it, a quick and easy way to go ahead and create materials inside of Twinmotion that you can use for any of your projects.